Spot World, what's going on this app? We now have an official name for this series. We're calling this NBA Rap. And today we have the 1958 to 1950. 59 season. Let's get into it with some quick facts. The 1958 to 1959 season was the 13th season of the NBA. The season began on October 24th, 1958 and ended on March 15th, 1959. The league introduced a new rule that prohibited offensive players from standing in the free throw lane for more than three seconds. Boston Celtics coach Red Arbach signed a three-year contract extension, becoming the first NBA coach to receive a multi-year contract contract. Arbach had led the Celtics to two consecutive NBA championships and was widely regarded as one of the best coaches in the league. Let's jump right into our team records for the 1958-1959 NBA season. In the East, the Boston Celtics led once again with a record of 52 wins and 20 losses, followed by the New York Knicks finishing 40 and 32, the Syracuse Nationals finishing 35 and 37, and the Philadelphia Warriors unable to clinch a playoff spot with a 32 and 40 record. The Western Division was led by the St. Louis Hawks with a 49 and 23 record, followed by the Minneapolis Lakers with a record of 33 and 39, the Detroit Pistons with a 28 and 44 record, and lastly, the Cincinnati Royals missing out on the playoffs, finishing with the league worst 19 wins and 53 losses. All right, we're getting into our season leaders as well as the all star game. The points leader of this season was Bob Pettit of the St. Louis Hawks with 2,105 points, averaging 29.2 points per game. The rebounds leader, Bill Russell of the Boston Celtics, amassing 1,612 rebounds, averaging 23 rebounds a game. And the assist leader on the season was Bob Cousy of the Boston Celtics, amassing 557 assists, averaging 8.5 a game. Yo, something I forgot to mention in the last video is that up to the 1969 to 1970 NBA season, league leaders in points, rebounds, and assists were determined by totals rather than averages. The 1959 All-Star Game was held at Detroit's Olympia Stadium. It featured the first in NBA All-Star history the sharing of game MVP honors. Rookie Elgin Baylor of the Minneapolis Lakers finished with 24 points and 11 rebounds. And Hawks veteran Bob Pettit finished with 25 points and 16 rebounds to split the honors as the West topped the East 124 to 108. The West used big runs in the second and fourth quarter to bury the East, which struggled from the field, only shooting 32.4%. The Eastern Conference stars were Bob Cousy, Bill Russell, and Bill Sharman from the Boston Celtics, Paul Arzen and Woody Salisbury from the Philadelphia Warriors, Richie Guerin and Kenny Sears from the New York Knicks, as well as Dolph Shays, Red Kerr, and Larry Costello of the Syracuse Nationals. The East was coached by Red Arbach of the Celtics. The Western Conference stars were Bob Pettit, Cliff Hagen, and Slater Martin of the St. Louis Hawks, Dick McGuire, George Yardley, and Gene Shu of the Detroit Pistons, Dick Garmaker, Larry Frost, and Elgin Baylor of the Minneapolis Lakers, and Jack Twyman of the Cincinnati Royals. They were coached by Ed McCauley of the St. Louis Hawks. Let's get into our award winners of this season. The MVP honors of the 1958 to 1959 NBA season was taken home by Bob Pettit of the St. Louis Hawks, averaging 29.2 points, 3.1 assists, and 16.4 rebounds a game. The Rookie of the Year was taken home by Elgin Baylor of the Minneapolis Lakers, averaging 24.9 points, 4.1 assists, and 15 rebounds a game. These two also made it to the All-NBA First Team alongside Bill Russell from the Boston Celtics, averaging 16.7 points, 3.2 assists, and 23 rebounds a game. Bob Cousy of the Boston Celtics averaging 20 points, 8.6 assists, and 5.5 rebounds a game. And Bill Sharman of the Boston Celtics averaging 20.4 points per game, 2.5 assists per game, and 4.1 rebounds a game. The All-NBA second team featured Paul Azrin of the Philadelphia Warriors averaging 26.4 points per game, 1.7 assists per game, and 9.1 rebounds per game. Cliff Hagen of the St. Louis Hawks averaging 23.7 points per game, 3.4 assists per game, and 10.9 rebounds per game. Dolph Shays of the Syracuse Nationals averaging 21.3 points per game, 
2.5 assists a game and 13.4 rebounds a game. Richie Guern of the New York Knicks averaging 18.2 points per game, 5.1 assists per game, and 7.3 rebounds a game. And Slater Martin of the St. Louis Hawks averaging 9.7 points per game, 4.7 assists per game, and 3.6 rebounds per game now look, all i want to say is this i ain't hating on slater martin i ain't hating on his game or nothing but how did he make the all nba second team with those numbers this is the second year in a row now where his numbers are just way different from everybody else if y'all could drop a comment real quick about what y'all think about that please do right now i are those numbers all nba second team worthy i feel like i could drop those numbers back then just saying. That being said, let's get into the playoffs. In round one of the playoffs, the Eastern Division semifinals featured the three seed Syracuse Nationals sweeping the two seed New York Knicks 2 0. In the Western Conference Division semifinals, the two seed Minneapolis Lakers were able to knock off the Detroit Pistons 2 1. In round two, the Eastern Division finals ended with the one seed Boston Celtics winning over the Nationals in a tough seven game series 4 3. In the West, the second seeded Lakers upset the First seed St. Louis Hawks 4-2 to advance to the finals. And here we are at the main event, the 1959 NBA Finals featuring the Boston Celtics versus the Minneapolis Lakers. The Celtics won the East by 12 games while the Hawks won the West by 16. Just about everyone expected a third straight Boston-St. Louis matchup in the NBA Finals. St. Louis, however, did not make it back to the Finals for the expected date with the Celtics because of a new rival superstar in the West. Elgin Baylor, a 6'5 forward from Seattle, helped boost the 19-53 Lakers team to a 33-39 record and a playoff berth by averaging 24.9 points and 15 rebounds a game. He made the All-NBA First Team as a rookie, which had previously only been accomplished only by Bob Pettit and Alex Groza. Baylor proved to be more than a handful for taller rivals. As strong as any of his counterparts, Baylor had a smooth scoring style that was way ahead of his time, and his ability to seemingly hang in the air would become the measuring stick for players that followed, like Connie Hawkins, Julius Irving, and Michael Jordan. This was Boston's third trip to the NBA Finals and Minneapolis's sixth. To date, this was the most recent time that an NBA team from Minnesota appeared in the NBA Finals as well as the first of only two times in NBA history that a team with a losing record made the NBA Finals. Boston won game one, 118 to 115. Game two, 128 to 108. Game three, 123 to 110. And game four, completing the first ever 4-0 sweep in NBA Finals history, 118 to 113. Spot World, that was the 1958 to 1959 NBA season, and this is wraps on this episode of NBA Wrapped. Yo, if you made it this far, hit that like button. If you new, hit that sub button. Yo, leave in the comments anything you thought about the season. Do you remember the times? Yo, what surprised you? Did anything surprise you? What do y'all think? Let me know. I'll see y'all next time.